On August 9, 2015, I made my way trackside in the early morning darkness. Before long, I hear a train coming up the line. It's 0530, so it's most likely the NS Train 12T, predecessor to the 37T coming in a little more than a month. It was too dark to get any kind of good video, but not too dark to make out the clean, sleek, and shiny maroon, yellow, and gray that is the throwback paint of NSSD 70 ACE number 1074, which is also known as the Lackawanna Heritage Unit. Along with the Union Pacific SD70 ACE number 8951, a second NSSD70 ACE, an NS-944 CW, and an NS Jevo, the Binghamton and Buffalo, New York bound manifest slipped through town with ghostly ease. Heritage Locomotive Fail Number 4 Several months earlier in March, I decided that I'd shoot a new angle on a familiar spot. What I didn't know was that the Pennsylvania Railroad Heritage Unit was on today's Train 31T, trailing two of two with an equally rare, at least for the time, Dash 840C leading the combo. This was technically my first ever catch of a Norfolk Southern Heritage Unit, and also Heritage Locomotive Fail Number 1. Three months later in June, I made my way to Taylor to see what was happening around the yard. I came into the yard with just enough time to just miss the locomotives, the leader of which was the Penn Central Heritage Unit number 1073. Heritage locomotive fail number two. The following month in July, in a scenario somewhat similar to the first, I made it trackside by the skin of my teeth but this time my video camera took its sweet nature time powering up and by the time I was finally able to hit record, well, what you saw is what I got. Heritage Locomotive Fail Number 3 Nescapec is a borough in Luzerne County, Pennsylvania with a population of just under 1,500 people. It's a rural and suburban mix where most town residents own their own home. The townsfolk of Nescopec tend to lean conservative and the public schools in Nescopec are above average in the country. The borough gets its name from Nescopec Creek, a Native American name purported to mean black, deep, and still water. In 2011, between September 6 and September 9, Nescopec became one of the many victims to Tropical Storm Lee. Lower-lying parts of the town that neighbored the Susquehanna River became flooded. One of the buildings that suffered the most damage was the Cooper House, and after sitting for almost eight years, the historical building of 1817 was finally demolished on April 26, 2019. This video chronicles some of my fails when chasing Norfolk Southern's heritage locomotives, but before we dive in deep, there's a few other trains that I want you to watch. Train 31T is seen here on July 19, 2015. Notice the tree limb wedged in the front pilot. This is the result of striking a tree around the Nescopec area here in Pennsylvania. Heavy rains that bring down trees in that area is a fairly regular occurrence during the summer months. Another interesting feature is that standard cab EMD ST60 trailing second. The last of the Mohicans then and now long gone today. The last little anomaly of this train is the scanner chatter. Keeping in mind that Canadian Pacific is running things at this time, listen to how the CP dispatchers gave out track warrants to crews over the radio then as opposed to how NS dispatchers give out track authorities over the radio today. NS Norfolk Southern 839 8139 North Center Washington operating north and complete CP of 679-679. On the track warning, What are the chances that that gentleman on the bike might just be another rail fan? 
Climbing the grade to Clark Summit is welded rail train number 914. Notice the extensive damage to the front of the engine. You guessed it, hit a tree. This happened somewhere along the Buffalo line. It's around 0530 on Sunday morning, July 24, 2016, and the train is the 11A. Normally an evening train, today 11A is running about 12 hours behind schedule because of storm damage done to the line in the Nescopec area. Are you starting to see the pattern here? On Monday, April 4, 2016, Norfolk Southern trains 10A southbound and 11A northbound operated over the Sunbury Line. For those not familiar with these numbers, they were formerly assigned to manifest between Conway Yard and Northumberland Yard. Up until a few months ago, these trains reached Northumberland via the Nittany and Bald Eagle short line between Tyrone and Lock Haven, but perhaps to eliminate the cost of trackage rights, had been running the Norfolk Southern Pittsburgh line all the way to Enola, across the Rockville Bridge and north up the Buffalo line to Northumberland. The two met at Taylor in the darkness of around 9 p.m. to the fanfare of local rail fans who'd been waiting eagerly since the takeover to see new trains on the line. It was my understanding that these were experimental trains, which explains their shortness. 14 cars on the 10A and 13 empties for the 11A but the pair ran between Binghamton and Norrie for almost two years. In 2018, the pair were rerouted back over the Pittsburgh line to Enola where the northbound to Enola turn, I believe it was the H-53, took over this traffic. While they ran over the Sunbury line, the 10A and 11A, what I like to call the A-team, were Binghamton, New York to Northumberland bound trains and returned. They served the central Pennsylvania area, specifically the North Shore short line, the Shemokin Valley Short Line, the Union County Industrial Short Line, the Nittany and Bald Eagle Short Line, the Lycoming Valley Short Line, as well as the large Northumberland Yard, Newberry Yard, and Williamsport area in Pennsylvania. Notice the difference in the makeup of the train's manifest.
This brings us back to Nescopec. As pointed out earlier, Nescopec is situated in Luzerne County, Pennsylvania, along with Wilkesbury and Hazleton. Nescopec at one time had a very busy freight station that was part of the Pennsylvania Railroad. The Nescopec Railroad was a 12-mile stretch that ran from Nescopec to Rock Glen and pretty much followed the Black Creek the whole distance. Reportedly, it connected the Wilkesbury branch with the line that ran from Catawissa to Hazleton. Prior to adding the Nescopec line, if someone or something wanted to travel from Wilkesbury to Philadelphia, they would either have had to travel all the way to Harrisburg and then to Philly, or else traveled as far as Catawissa and then changed trains. That might not have been too bad for people, but freight had no choice except to take the long way and the Nescopec Railroad cut off a lot of distance and it also made it possible to ship coal from the Hazleton area to Wilkesbury. And for a while, that was about the only way to get it there as the Hazleton area and south was where they first found coal. Or so the story goes. In video T-179, I talked a little bit about Nescopec and the importance that it played in the days of the Pennsylvania Railroad. Here's that snippet from the video, just in case you missed it. The Pennsylvania Railroad began using CTC on the Buffalo Line way, way back in the late 1930s with an installation between Machias, New York and East Aurora, New York. But the second phase between Rockville, Pennsylvania and the west end of the Northumberland Yard was accomplished in the late 1950s. Part of the upgrades included this then new block station at Case, which replaced the original tower. The board was a three-sided union switch and signal design common to the time and the rightmost portion was originally intended to serve the Wilkesbury branch but the PRR reportedly balked at the cost and opted to close the tower at Nescopec which controlled a nearly three mile long siding near the geographic center of the 60 mile branch. Fast forward to 2024 and besides today's Norfolk Southern River line there's not a whole lot of railroad left to be found in town. But the railroad's why we're here today, in the oh-so-hot 90-plus degree midday sun. That train that's coming towards us is the Norfolk Southern, Roanoke, Virginia to Binghamton, New York bound 10Z. This train ran into trouble on the Buffalo Line where its two locomotives were rendered inoperable. A backup locomotive had to be called up from Anoli Yard to drag this short train all the way to Bingo Town and that locomotive turned out to be none other than freshly painted Lackawanna Heritage Unit number 1074. This was the second day of a three-day Heritage Unit streak. Yesterday, southbound train 11Z had the Savannah and Atlanta number 1065 on the point. These two locomotives led this train into Roanoke, Virginia, where they went on west to Knoxville and Chattanooga, Tennessee on a different train. This wasn't the first time the SNA led this train symbol. Back in 2020 on August 8th, I narrowly captured it as it slid under Lackawanna Avenue and rounded the curve at Steamtown. Heritage unit fail number, uh, heck, I lost count. The day after, the Central of Georgia number 8101 slipped by most rail fans when it came through town unexpectedly in the early morning hours. And while this technically doesn't count as a fail, I guess. The sun only touched the tips of the valley and the poor lighting and composition made for some less than impressive video footage. The good news is that I was able to follow his DPU up the hill for a little ways.
After waiting five hours in the hot midday sun, Train 10Z with the Lackawanna Heritage Unit leading came into what's left of the Nescopec yard. This train is moving so slow because aside from the problems encountered with the locomotives on the Buffalo line, this train ran into another problem about three miles down the line. One of its freight cars had an overheated bearing or something along those lines, so the train had to stop and the conductor had to inspect the defective car. When all was said and done, 10Z had a 10 mile per hour speed restriction and the bad car had to be inspected every three miles. Fortunately for the crew of the 10Z, Today's southbound train 11Z is waiting there for them at the siding and will inspect the bad car as they roll by. The bad news is that the bad car will have to be set out on the Nescopec siding, delaying the northbound train for the third time since leaving Harrisburg. As you watch this train roll by, pay close attention to its makeup, specifically those empty bulkhead flat cars, an easy identifying staple of the sense cut back to Binghamton train 31T like the one that we saw earlier in this video. I mentioned that Nescopec had a bad reputation for bad rain and thunderstorms. During the night, one such storm knocked out power to the town. Traffic lights were dark, gas stations were closed, 
And this group of people were chainsawing a downed tree and hauling it off to who knows where. They seemed to be impressed with my little aerial drone and didn't mind making a cameo appearance in the video. In fact, the man on the far left lives around the corner and says that he can remember when the PRR and the yard were still here. These were all very nice people. Because the 11Z was only about a mile away, it didn't take long for them to appear after the 10Z rolled north. The 11Z had its own problems that day while it waited. I never heard exactly what the issue was, but it was enough that the conductor had to walk and inspect at least some of the train. The reason that this train is moving so slow is because they're coming off of the siding at Nescapet. Check out those two cooling towers way down yonder. They belong to the Susquehanna Steam Electric Generating Station in Berwick. I have a very unusual story to share with you about those towers and the train that I was photographing over 20 years ago. 
But that is another story for another video.